Namathu Ratana Tayasa May I pay homage to Triple Zem, the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. My respect goes to my parents and my teachers. Hello, good evening everyone. So today is Sunday the 16th of uh, May 2021. This is Achan Sujan from Varapunya Meditation Center, Aberdeen, Scotland. As usual, I'm here with you all tonight. Hello, good evening. Good evening, Margaret. Uh, I am in a way. Uh, thank you. Um, good, give, good evening, Manish. And good evening, everyone. So today is Sunday. Good evening, Emma. Mm, so whoever join us, please uh, write something so I know you are there. Yeah. Uh, so, good evening, okay, right, so uh, today uh, a few things that uh, we had uh, a tree planting um, and a few members of the community turned up to help planting a tree. Bruce was uh, preparing from early morning and um, a few members joined after the lunchtime. Uh, however, unfortunately, I was unable to join with this fun planting a tree because of this uh, sudden emergency uh, meeting uh, giving a talk came up. And uh, meanwhile, uh, due to the small uh, fern or the baby deer was lying somewhere in between. And as a result of that, uh, couldn't be expanded. Um, so, good evening, Karina. Karina also was there. Oh, Namasakan Achan Santi. Uh, uh, so, Achan Santi joining from Thailand. Kapun uh, Kap. So, yeah, uh, so as a result, I wasn't able to join with the members to plant a tree. Uh, so, but many people joined. Uh, hello, Ko Anish from Thailand again. Uh, so, thank you. Now, today we are uh, on the another um, qualities of the Buddha. <coughs> And as we are following the qualities of the Buddha uh, and why we respect to the Buddha. And uh, so there's nine qualities. And uh, just to remind you again, the Arahang, the pure one, the Samma Sambuddha, the perfectly enlightened one. Vijja Charana Sampanno, he is impeccable in conduct and understanding. So this is which we uh, completed yesterday. And another few more left, that's a Sugato, the accomplished one or sublime, and a Loka Vidu, the knower of the wells, Anuttaro Purisadhamma Sarati, he trains perfectly those who wish to be trained, and the Satha Deva Manusanang, he is a teacher of gods and humans, and then the last one, a Buddha Bhagawa, so he is fully awake and holy. So, so far we have covered the uh, three qualities that are some, uh, Arahang, Samma Sambuddho and Vijjacharana Sampanno. So today we are looking at the fourth one which is Sugato. General pr translation is known as the accomplished one or sublime. So this is another quality of the Buddha. Okay. And as we know, who is the Buddha? Once again, in, a, in the Sanyukta Nikaya, sorry, Sutta Nipata, it says, a Buddha who is rid of dust, a dust here means all the defilements, unblemished, purified, and has attained the destruction of birth and death. 
Hello, Yvonne, and also further on uh, the Buddha who uh, actually one who has caught the strap and thong, the reins and the bridle band whose shaft is lifted. He has directly known what should be directly known. So that is the Buddha. Okay. A person who has directly known what should be directly known and also developed what should be developed and abandoned what should be abandoned. And that is known as the Buddha. Okay. So the Buddha, as we've been talking about uh, so far, Arahang, we have covered what the Karahang means. Uh, hara means the killer, a killer of all the defilements. And Samma Sambuddha that we discussed last time, that why he was called Samma Sambuddha. And then uh, uh, two nights we were talking on the Vijja and Charana, that how he attained the liberation uh, by remembering all the past lives, understanding the uh, sentient beings' Uh, birth and a death and a reborn again and then an eradication of all the tents. In a short form, he speaks what he does or what he does, he speaks as he does. Okay? So that is the Vijja and Charana. Uh, and the important fact is that he, he, he was saying that we shouldn't bring our ancestral history a nationality, ethnicity, and a clan to measure others as superior or inferior, and that uh, the wise one or educated one would not do, uh, and that is the effect of uh, uh, the conduct and understanding. So today we are on the fourth quality that is called a sugata or sugato which basically means accomplished one or sublime. Uh, and here accomplished or sublime or sugato, basically we can see in four different aspects. One, because he was accomplished, one uh, accomplished one because of uh, a manner of going and that which is good. And here the manner is talking about how he was going. The gata, or gata means basically English language is so similar. Gata and uh, gone, uh, gone, or uh, or uh, basically purified his mind. You know, his mind is blameless. His conduct is blameless. Uh, and then, uh, why his conduct is blameless? Why he is purified? or why we are calling that he has gone. And that's simpler because he is, he had practiced in accordance with the Eightfold Noble Path. So this path leading to be a good person, right? Leading to be the purified one, leading to be the uh, li living a life with a blamelessness. So that's why the first category is that manner of going. So he's walking the path, uh, uh, walking a path of an Eightfold Noble Path. Uh, anyone remember the Eightfold Noble Path? Please, you can type the following the Eightfold Noble Path. The, a, a person who has followed the Eightfold Noble Path, that means a person is gone beyond. Yeah? Sugato, gone beyond. Uh, and uh, anyone remember eight full noble path? Yeah, so you can type it. And a second aspect is that because he ha he is known as accomplished one or gone beyond, because of being gone to the excellent place, uh, gone beyond to the excellent place. Yeah? And how do we know which one is the excellent place? The excellent place is a place known as the Nibbana in Buddhism. Yeah? And this excellent place is a Nibbana because a place where there is no birth, no death, 
a place where there is no light and no no uh, bright uh, sorry no no sun and no moon um, but it's a place of a, a, a complete um, so Margaret is replying uh, for the Eightfold Noble Path is a right understanding, a right thought, a right speech, a right action, right livelihood, a right effort, a right mindfulness, and right concentration. Well done, Margaret. That's the Eightfold Noble Path. Well done. Yeah. So a person who walks on this Eightfold Noble Path eventually will attain the excellent place. It's like we have here in Aberdeen, we have a Union Square. And if you are going from West Hill, so you have to take the, uh, the, uh, the, the road that leads to the, West, uh, to, to the Aberdeen and then uh, taking the road to the shopping center. So this whole path is once walked, doesn't matter how fast you walk, or you are walking, or you are taking a car, or you are taking any other vehicles. So eventually, if you are following the path, then you will arrive to the destination, and which is excellent. And here the second is known as the Sugato, one who has gone to that excellent place. This here, the excellent place, means the Nibbana, yeah? the supreme attainment. And Nibbana is basically means the destruction of all the tents or destruction of the concept of greed, hatred, and delusion. Yeah? The destruction of a greed, hatred, and delusion. And some may say that there is or there isn't the Nibbana. And uh, uh, my understanding is that as long as you have the concept of a me and a mine, it will be difficult to comprehend the concept of a Nibbana because the Nibbana is the free from the concept of a me and a mind. It's a complete peace. As it says, the, this is the, uh, the, uh, the greatest happiness greatest peace is the Nibbana and when he when the when uh, there was a story that when the Venerable Sariputra was saying so he was asked and he said oh uh, because there is no feeling that's why it's uh, excellent and whenever there is a feeling so it always you know drag us to the worldlings into the concept of liking disliking and so on. The moment when you don't have that, the mind is equilibrium, then that moment you will be attaining the Nibbana. So that's the second factor why he is known as the Sugata or Sugato, one who has gone beyond. And the, the third factor is called rightly gone without any U-turn to the attachments or having gone rightly. Yeah. I remember a few years ago I was watching a documentary about uh, um, Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher and one of the very famous uh, parliamentary talk she was saying that there is no U-turn and I tried to understand what that U-turn mean and then eventually I understand that a U-turn means basically you are going forward there will be no U-turn yeah? like that here the third aspect of a Sugato basically means that you have gone forward you will be not turning back to the worldlings, uh, even to the sota panna, that uh, concept of a lie and a concept of a I, me, mine, and this is me, this is belongs to me, and so on. Mm. Ah, this lady is not for turning, right? Something like that. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret, for uh, correcting me. Yeah? So, uh, that's the uh, U-turn, the lady... This lady is not for you t uh, turning uh, like that. Mm, okay. So, and here, 
there is no U turn. And he, here, the moment, the story is the moment when he made the aspiration, made a vow that I would like to be the Buddha. And now, the story is he, one of his previous lives, he was an ascetic who could attain uh, the um, enlightenment in his life, but having seen the previous Buddhas, uh, Buddha uh, whose name was Dipankara and he also wanted to be the Buddha. So on the basis of that he lied down and made the uh, resolution or the aspiration that I would like to be the Buddha in the future. And, uh, and the Buddha Dipankara in that life uh, confirms that you know, after this many eons of a lifetime uh, in the, in those situation in this clan, this man will become the Buddha. After that aspiration, he never returned back to the worldling, but he pursued himself uh, towards the attainment of the Buddhahood. And this is the uh, the the, uh, the strong uh, mind uh, that the Buddha had which compared to many of us, normally we made some resolution that I am going to change myself uh, by doing this and doing that and eventually we cannot continue and we just give up. Uh, whereas the Buddha, after he made that aspiration, he never gave up. So he continued going forward towards the attainment of the Buddha and eventually after eons of a times of a uh, aspiration, uh, the uh, perfection, he finally managed to perfect his perfections and became the Buddha. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, since knowing the effect of the, you know, people were having a, an, a thought or the concept of a so-called, there is eternal, eternal, eternalism and nihilism, the concept, which Buddha will not uh, go back to that concept at all, having understood that there is an end of it. Uh, so he will not be going into uh, that, and that's why he is known as non-returner. Non or now here Margaret is saying about the, uh, Miss Tasha, this lady is not for turning, here the Buddha is not for turning. After one, after he had attained, so there is no turning back to the worldlings uh, uh, that uh, the Buddha's quality. And then the the last factor of the sugato or the sublime or accomplished one is known as the uh, he speaks only in feeling place or uh, he enum uh, enunciates rightly. And that basically means uh, speaking right time and a right occasion. Now, now here, there are many people think that they know the truth and they are sure, so they will not care who or people what people will think about him or her. He will speak it out, and that can create a danger for themselves and then for others. And which is the case happening in, in the moment in so many places and in social media as well. Uh, thinking that they know the truth and they are promoting that truth by ma many ways or any ways. Uh, so with the thought that they are presenting the truth. Whereas in the case of the Buddha, uh, he, uh, say, he will not say if that's a uh, harming. Like uh, there is a saying, the information is true, it is correct, and but that leads to the harmness of oneself or the another, and the, also the truth is bitter or, no, or displeasure to hear by many people, and people are not welcoming it, then he would not say that word. So basically, untrue. Um, untrue, uh, incorrect, uh, causes to harm, people dislike, uh, displeasure, then he will not speak. 
Similarly, the second one is that true. Yeah, Early on was uh, not true. Now the second one is true. The information is correct, but it leads to the harm, harm of oneself or the another, uh, and people dislike it. So the truth, correct, people don't like it. Then again, Buddha will not say that. Yeah. And then a third, uh, it is true. The information is correct and it leads to the good cause. Um, but people dislike it and people don't want to hear about it. And that again, a Buddha will not speak immediately. Buddha will wait for the appropriate time or the, the good time to speak. And that's how at that moment he will be saying uh, those information. And further on, uh, the Buddha is talking about a true, incor a true, correct, uh, a good, and then people like to hear, people will welcome to hear. Again, a Buddha will not speak immediately. He will take time. You know, he will look at the conditions and then he will speak. And the rest don't need to worry, don't need to talk anymore. That if that's untrue, so if that's a true, incorrect, uh, leads to the harmless, then he won't say any anyway. So that's anything, the, any information, if that is leading to harmless, people like it, then he also doesn't speak. The only time when he, only, only information he will be speaking is true and then correct and then doesn't lead to harmless, people may not like to hear but he will take time to speak it so this is a quite a good uh, uh, um, information and instruction to all of us as well uh, sometimes when we hear information and we think that's true uh, and we think that's correct uh, but we forgot to judge that after you have said it will that make people in danger or will people want to hear? But normally we become a very arrogant, uh, and then uh, we will simply say, "This is the truth, whether you like it or not." I am going to say it, and that is how you yourself put into the danger. And this is the uh, the Buddha's advice, and also this is the Buddha's quality that he will not say, even though that is the truth if the time is not right. So that's why this is quite interesting uh, information that we have to be mindful of. And this is the quality. So Sugato is the third quality of the Buddha in a sense that he had walked the Eightfold Noble Path and that leads to the liberation and which is known as the excellent uh, place where there is no coming is only there and then uh, free from all the tents and free from all the uh, uh, asavas okay? all the asavas and there is no return so you are you have fully realized and that's why it is also translated as the accomplished one so buddha was the accomplished one or he has attained the sublime or sugato basically means gone beyond this worldling and freed himself. So I end here for tonight's talk and may you all be well and happy. Uh, and thank you everyone for joining with me on this Sunday night. Uh, and may you all be well and happy. May the Buddha Dhamma Sangha bless you. In the meantime, in a few moments, we will have uh, evening chanting and guided meditation. You're most welcome to join with us. So until then, good night, take care, and may you all be well and happy. See you shortly. Shantu.